sure it's really dangerous and crazy, even though you're not basically in it. Yeah. I'm sure you see some crazy There's stuff. a lot of prostitution, there's a lot of drugs. <laughs> there's a lot of um, people saying and doing crazy things or, or uh, you know, just, just a, a lot of unusual things that you wouldn't normally see in a normal neighborhood. Um, uh, people get upset at different things. They they um, and they take it out in different ways. You know, a lot of people they get in fights. They there's a lot of yelling and screaming sometimes. Uh, there's a lot of domestic violence, um, which is never good. Um, like, but you know that's that comes with the territory. The you know low income and the drugs and and it's frustrating living here. It's hard because you can't ever get anywhere because it's so expensive. It's it's really hard to even save money or anything like that staying in hotels. So today we're here with Alicia in Garden Grove, California. We're actually at the Garden Grove Inn today. Um, Alicia, are you originally here from Orange County or Garden Grove? Uh, no, I'm from Colorado actually. Oh wow! But um, I grew up here since about 13, give or take something like that. Do you ever go back home to visit? No, I was so young when I moved out here. It's not. I don't really have any family here. My, my dad was in the military. Oh okay. So. And. Um, What's your current living situation today? I'm staying in a hotel uh, okay. currently. Um, lost my apartment a while back. Um, and basically this is my only option at the time. So here I am. <laughs> so you're able to come up with money, enough money to have a hotel room every night? Well, yeah, it's me, me, it's not just me. It's, it's me and my brother and um, his girlfriend. So it's, it makes it a little bit easier. It's more people working towards, you know. But if it was on my own, I probably wouldn't be able to do it. It's very expensive. How much is it a night for a room? Um, well, we're, we're seeing at it's about $100 a night. Oh, that's not bad. It's not bad. It's not bad. Um, it's small, though. It's a lot more expensive than my apartment was, so that kind of sucks, but it, it is what it is. What led up to you losing your apartment? Um, I um, had an apartment in, in Westminster, and I was, you know, had my own business. I was doing fine, and I started to get sick. I um, ended up, long story short, my uh, gallbladder burst and burst really slowly and and I almost died and but this was over a period of like three or four months so um, by the time I finally had surgery in December like I was on my deathbed and you know I hadn't been able to work for a while so you know <laughs> couldn't pay the rent can't work basically and that's where I was that's that's what happened and I was actually in a hotel when I when I had the surgery too so yeah it was tough <laughs> what was your business um, I had a cleaning business oh wow yeah I was making pretty good money. And oh, we're gonna have to talk about that. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Yeah. Um, so, how do you earn money today? Do you? Um, I would do. I do odd jobs here and there, and just you know, basically whatever I could do. Um, I help people with their taxes. Um, you know, stuff like that. Different things. Whatever I can do to come up with money, basically. Some things I won't say on camera. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it is what it is. Again. Yeah. And so I was going to ask you if you've ever worked a typical nine to five job, but you actually had your own business. I, I, awesome. I have, if you, if that's what you could, would consider a nine to five job. I, I have, yes. Um, I used to work for an airplane company back in the day. I worked in the office that didn't last long. I'm not like an office type of person, but I was like the manager for um, AutoZone for a while. Um, that's what my career field is. <clears throat> actually, um, automotive and not cleaning houses. This cleaning houses is just easy way to make money. Um, but yeah, I work on cars <laughs> for the most part. <laughs> And are drugs currently a part of your life? Not currently. Um, they used to be. Unfortunately, today I am not. I'm not on drugs anymore. But you know, there was a time when it was pretty bad. Yay! Good for you. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. When I got That's sick great. and I, you know, I had to stop everything. Figured I might as well stay that way. So that was a blessing in disguise. Yeah. Well, yes and no. There's a lot of bad that comes with it, but that I still am trying to work towards repairing. But you know. It, it, at least I'm not high anymore. It's true. Yeah, with the fentanyl, that's like almost a death I actually sentence. didn't do fentanyl. I did, only did meth. But but uh, yeah, fentanyl is a scary thing for me. That's not, a lot of people around me do it, and it's yeah. just like I stay as far away from it as possible. I actually never did that, but you know, a lot of people have, and I've seen I've seen people die left and right. It's really scary, <laughs> and that's enough to keep me off of that one at least. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> How often do you see people like the ambulance come into the Garden Grove Inn? I, I don't I don't really go outside much, so I don't really see it all that often, but I can tell you, um, I know three or four people last year alone that died, that people that were close to me, maybe not like close friends or anything, but people were, you know, like my ex-boyfriend's son died and a fentanyl overdose and um, a couple other people that were, you know, not too far from arm's reach for me that died of fentanyl overdose is scary, <laughs> really scary. 
So it seems like the Garden Girl event sure has cleaned up because like it, when we started coming out here like last summer, there were people like hanging out all on the street and across the street and then Honestly, and I don't know because like, like I said, I don't. You weren't here. I'm, I'm not, I wasn't here. Um, I was actually, um, I had my apartment last year, but I, I don't come outside much. <laughs> yes, this is all new to you. It, it, it is and it isn't like like the hotel scene. I've, I've been in a hotel before actually with my two kids, but I, like I said, I, I stay inside because I don't really know anybody over here. So it's not like, you know, I don't, I don't really make friends. Yeah. For obvious reasons, not because they're bad people, just because I, you know, I don't want to get high again. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Stay away. Yeah. So, and, and because, you know, before I had my kids, so I'm just kind of conditioned to that staying home with the kids, staying inside with them. And so I don't really wouldn't know what to do to go outside. Yeah. <laughs> Where are your kids today? Um, when I got sick, I had my mother-in-law take them up mother-in-law and you know I can't really um, petition to get them back yet because I don't have a stable place and I'm not gonna take them to a hotel again yeah. it's just not they're a little bit older now and and they're in school so it's like bouncing around it's just not what we could do for them I, I'm not gonna do that to them so <clears throat> I'm sure it's really dangerous and crazy even though you're not basically in it yeah. I'm sure you see some crazy there's stuff. a lot of prostitution there's a lot of drugs <laughs> there's a lot of um, people saying and doing crazy things or, or uh, you know just just a, a lot of unusual things that you wouldn't normally see in a normal neighborhood. Um, uh, people get upset at different things. They, they um, and they take it out in different ways. You know, a lot of people, they get in fights. They, there's a lot of yelling and screaming sometimes. Uh, there's a lot of domestic violence, um, which is never good. Um, like, but you know, that's, that comes with the territory, the you know, low income and the drugs. And, and it's frustrating living here. It, it's hard because you can't ever get anywhere because it's so expensive. It's, it's really hard to even save money or anything like that, staying in hotels. Have your belongings ever been stolen? Oh yeah, 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 they have. I, I've just learned to take everything and put it in storage and just, um, yeah, and, and even now, I don't even have that much left. So like I lost pretty much everything, my whole entire apartment, you know, I, I had worked towards getting, you know, really nice furniture for my kids and I've not, I lost everything. I have basically like some clothes and a little couple more things and that's about it. That's all I have now. And, and it's not that big of a deal because I can always just, if I did, got it once, I could do it again. And I, I can't carry it around with me right now anyway, so it's less of a headache, I guess. <laughs> so I see it. Yeah. How old are you, Alicia? 44. 44. And so um, how do you plan on, or do you have any plans on getting out of your current situation? Um, well, I um, had a company that helped me before when I got COVID um, because I am high risk because I do have medical issues. So it was a uh, housing, I don't know if it was a housing key, it was one of those ones, rapid rehousing that um, that put me up in my apartment because I was high risk and had COVID and um, was living in the apartments at the time, I mean, uh, uh, hotels at the time with the kids. So they paid for my first month and, and, and deposit and all that to get into the apartment. And it feels, it sucks that because I lost the apartment because, you know, they, they were so willing to help. I contacted them again, but it, it's the process is a little bit longer now because they had already helped me. So it's basically a waiting game. I've got a couple other waiting lists that I've been on for a long time. So it's like, you know, whatever comes up first, you know, it's tough. Or if I could come up with, you know, $4,000 move in somewhere, then that would be, yeah, and that's a perfect example of people. Yeah. yeah. And then, um, <clears throat> so after being in the situation, after you lost your apartment last year, and being at the Garden Grove Inn and seeing all this craziness, what's the most important lesson that you've learned? Um, just basically, uh, I, you know what, honestly, I don't know, just just continue to do the, the things that are going to progress in life and not things that are gonna hold you back and, and don't count on other people for, to do anything for you. You gotta get out there and do it yourself because if someone does something for you, then they're gonna expect something and that's basically how it works out here. And you don't know what they're gonna expect, so. Do, do things on your own and make sure that the people that you have around you are people that you are trustworthy and, and not into crazy stuff, you know? That's basically it. And then, um, do you by chance have, have any social media information like I, Facebook yeah. or a cash app in case somebody yeah, wants to donate I to do. you? And I can give you that too. Can I put it down? <clears throat> Okay, um... Um, this is... Uh... Oh, 
Awesome. Thank you. And then lastly, are you okay if we use the video on our YouTube channel? Sure. Awesome. Thank you, Alicia. Thank you.